you know, DeSantis has proven himself to be a formidable opponent, but every opponent has their weaknesses. So based on the research and insights that you've um, uh, done at the com at your communications hub, to what makes DeSantis vulnerable, particularly with voters in presidential swing states? Yeah, that's a great question, Sarah. And I think Andre also set up well what I'm going to answer. I'm going to go into a little bit of some stuff like the right, uh, the rank crisis that she gave a really compelling story to tell about. That's a major issue we have here in Florida. But uh, DeSantis is uniquely vulnerable, both on economic issues, but also on social slash culture war issues. Um, he's basically spent the last five months uh, and really the last two years um, waging a culture wars in the state to try to appeal to Republican primary voters in those early primary states like Iowa and New Hampshire. Those are voters that are out of the mainstream, right? They don't represent the average irregular American voter. Uh, and he's done this um, really, um, and it's really, these issues have major pushback from moderate voters and swing voters and, and voters of all race, color, creed. Um, and these are things like the near total abortion ban, the six week abortion ban, which he signed in the dead of night at 11 p.m. at night in a closed ceremony, not uh, it, to fanfare. If you know anything about DeSantis over the last two years, when he's so proud of something that he wants to tout, he shows up in a, a local community, does a huge event gets a massive amount of earned media, and he signed this in the dead of night. It's not the first time this legislation session he's done that. He did that with the permitless carry bill, uh, a bill that allows um, um, someone to con uh, conceal carry a weapon without a permit, without training, uh, without a background check. This is a bill that's opposed by 70 plus percent of Floridians. We an issue that we know resonates nationally after all of the recent mass shootings in the country. Uh, after and and so we know there's vulnerabilities there. Additionally, he's been waging attacks on education from the Don't Say Yay bill uh, to book and course bans to attack on higher education, including banning DEI uh, trainings and um, programs, as well as taking over a college in Florida. Uh, really, a right wing uh, college. He wants to turn our new College of Florida, which is a small liberal arts school in Southwest Florida into the Hillsdale, Hillsdale of the South, which is really a scary idea. And then banning ma majors in colleges, including potentially banning gender studies. So why he's done all of this, uh, he's avoided, um, not avoided, but he's uh, let the affordability crisis in our state linger uh, while doing nothing to help out ordinary fo folks. Actually, he's given bailouts and handouts to the biggest corporations in the state of Florida. Um, and so Florida's actually become uh, the most unaffordable state in the country, which I think is surprising. I know there's some folks on this call from California and New York, uh, but the thing about Florida is our corporations don't pay a living wage in the state. Uh, we did pass a $15, million, minimum $15 minimum wage a few years ago on the constitutional ballot, uh, which Ron DeSantis didn't support, but our housing crisis, uh, crisis uh, whether it's rent, whether it's property insurance, has exploded over the last couple of years. And we are now have cities like Miami that are actually more unaffordable than San Francisco, if you can believe that. So um, another thing that's happened here in Florida under his uh, time as governor, we've had property insurance rates double. Uh, they're actually three times the national average. And he's done all this while taking uh, more than $10 million from the property insurance industry uh, and giving them a $3 billion handout. Uh, Andrea really caught the story really good about our rental crisis. Over the last two years, we've had rent increases in Florida go up in our major cities more than anywhere else in the country. Um, and then we've also had basically a rubber stamp public service commission um, that is really uh, every rate increase that uh, utility companies have wanted over the last few years, they've gotten uh, usually double digit ones too at that. So we have his record as governor. He's got the culture war issues. His, attacks on social issues that we know don't play with a broad uh, multicultural uh, coalition across the country in our swing states. Uh, we have the economic issues here. Uh, Florida's become unaffordable. That's a story we can tell. It's a story that partners on the ground are telling every day. Uh, and then we have his congressional record from his time in Congress, right? This is a guy who was a founding member of the Freedom Caucus. So think Jim Jordan kind of guy, right? This is a guy who uh, supported Paul Ryan's budgets so we really have an opportunity to go back to the 2012 playback book. And if you think about that election, it was really defined on economic messaging um, that, you know, who was looking out for you and who, who they were looking out. 
right? This is a guy who voted for Medicare, Social Security cuts, as well as raising the retirement to 70 uh, years old. You'll actually see, uh, this is weird bedfellows, but the president, former President Trump, uh, currently running ads across the country, hitting Ron DeSantis on Medicare and Social Security hits, uh, which is ironic considering Trump himself also supported those when he was office. But it does show that this is an issue that cuts across partisanship. It's not just an issue that works in a Republican primary or in, in, with Democratic voters. It works across the partisanship lines. In addition to that, he also voted to deregulate banks in 2018. Uh, so the recent bite baking crisis that you've seen, his hands are on that as well. Um, and then um, obviously multiple times when he was in Congress, he voted to repeal Obamacare, uh, which uh, includes a very popular pre-existing conditions protection clause. Um, and then he voted for $1.9 trillion of Trump tax cuts. So you can see there's a real opportunity to hit him on some of those really out of mainstream unpopular economic issues, plus the earlier ones I talked about on social issues. The other thing he's going to experience is he's going from a really sort of controlled media environment in Florida. Um, over the last two years, he's really cultivated uh, these online small media um, organizations, the Florida Standard, the Floridian. Uh, those are a couple of men uh, mentioned, plus R uh, Rumble, which is relocated to Sarasota. It's an online streaming services. He's not used to talking to press, not real press. Uh, Right-wing media, yes. Tucker Carlson, yes. Um, he's stepping outside of that sort of bubble that he's built for himself in Florida, this echo chamber. Uh, and he's, as you can see, I think over the last six weeks, he's taken some hits. His, you know, there's some, been some funny stories. I mean, the guy ate pudding with his fingers, right? Uh, <laughs> and so there's a real, you know, the real going through the grinder of being running for president. And then finally, he's a guy who lacks definition. Um, he's widely known nationally, but not well known. Um, and that really gives us an opportunity now, before he files for president, before he runs either mid-May or June, uh, to define him. And I think we're doing a good job as a general overall ecosystem, both here in the state of Florida now, but also nationally. Uh, you'll see a lot of the narratives that organizers, groups on the ground are pushing um, that have started resonating nationally. And I think that's a real credit to really a unified message you hear from organizations in the state. Uh, and then you see national organizations picking up, um, you know, they talk a lot about the property insurance crisis we have in Florida, the housing crisis, the rental crisis. Ron DeSantis has run off for his presidential campaigns. I don't know if you know this, folks, but Fort Lauderdale was literally underwater for four days. Uh, and you see all of our folks growing in the same direction. You see national folks picking up on that. And I really do think, um, you know, not to be too crude, but we have an opportunity to kill his presidential aspirations uh, in the cradle, if you will.